Hi everybody, it's Dr. Monica O'Hara. Welcome to another episode of Dear Derm with Well and Good. Today, we're checking out your skincare routines. So let's see what you guys sent me to check out. Hi, I'm Kylie Burkus. I am 21 years old and my skin typically is more on the oily side, I would say for sure. It has like definitely gotten less oily like over the years, but in high school, I definitely struggled with that a lot. First, let's talk about where oil comes from. So we have these teeny little glands in our skin called sebaceous glands, and they are the oil producing factories. How active your factories are, how open your little oil factories are, are really genetic. Some people have super active oil glands and their skin is perceived to be oily. Some people have underactive oil glands and their skin is perceived to be dry. And there's a lot of things that can change oil production. One is the products you're using. They could be stripping the natural oils in your skin. The second is hormonal fluctuations. So we know that at different points at life, Oil production changes dramatically. At puberty, it goes up. At menopause, it goes down. And that's why we notice dry skin around the time of menopause and oily skin and acne around the time of puberty. Sometimes when you strip your skin excessively of oil with drying products, drying cleansers, drying toners, um, your little sebaceous factories go into overdrive and they're like, y'all, we need to fix this. And they go into overdrive creating more oil. So you could actually be stoking the fire, fueling the fire a little bit. It all depends on what exactly are the ingredients in your cleansing products. On a typical night, I'll kind of walk you through what products I typically use. Um, I've been loving the Tata Harper exfoliant. I just started using this because I feel like I didn't exfoliate enough. So I've been trying to rotate that in with my other cleansers like at least two or three times a week. Some of the ingredients in there, essential oils, citric acid, aloe, they may really be more irritating than soothing, calming, or even oil reducing. I don't know that they add tons in terms of oil reduction. The one ingredient in there that does love oils, our very favorite, our beloved, OG beta hydroxy acid. Because of my masks that I wear all the time, I've been breaking out around my face like literally all the time. So I feel like I needed to get a glycolic um, base cleanser in my skin routine, routine just to get um, something a little bit more strong. Um, I love the M61 Power Cleanse. I like the fact that you're using a glycolic acid, particularly in the context of maskne, right? The dreaded maskne that we're all dealing with, hopefully not for too much longer, but we are dealing with it. So alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acids can help reduce inflammation, can help exfoliate the skin, can help with oil production and acne prevention. So that's a good ingredient, but you can do that without the tea tree oil. You don't need to add all these extra bells and whistles, which just could be potentially more irritating and drying, which again can drive the whole process and make your oil factories go into high gear. Also, I love the Connelly, I think those are brands of their products. This cleanser I've also been using, which I do like. So I love Caudalie as a brand, but all the extra stuff, all the extra bells and whistles, the peppermint, the rose, all of that stuff can just be drying you out more. So I just urge you to use one cleanser, choose one cleanser, choose one that has the right stuff in it. I personally would stick with one that has a beta hydroxy acid, like a salicylic acid. Keep it simple. There's no reason to complicate things because I guarantee adding all these extra ingredients is making your sebaceous glands kick it into high gear. Then at night, I typically use a serum after I cleanse. I love this Caudalie one. I like your nighttime serum, actually. I love that the squalene adds natural hydration to the skin. Let's pause here for a second and talk about that. Because oftentimes people with oily skin freak out and they don't want to moisturize their skin. That shouldn't be the case. There are ways to moisturize the skin without making it extra oily. First tip, go with a light lotion instead of a heavier cream. Remember, lotions start with L, they're lighter. Lotion, light. Cream is heavier. Lotions are water-based, creams are oil-based. I love your idea of adding in a serum. Why? Because serums are very highly concentrated, very light, 
absorb easily, and don't generally add a lot of grease to the skin. I like active ingredients like antioxidants and retinols to be in your nighttime routine as well when the proverbial factory is open so that all the workers can make magic happen while you sleep. That's where the term beauty sleep comes from. And then typically after that, I still need like a little bit more um, hydration. So I, typically, I normally use a um, oil after my serum. And right now I love this Cora Organics facial um, oil. I also use the Use to the People oil a lot too. It's very similar. I see like similar results. So I'll sometimes swap those two out. The extra oil that you're adding on top of the serum may be a smidge too much because you're adding oil on top of oil, right? And we're trying to, we're trying to cut through that. We're trying to reduce it. So my suggestion would be stick with the serum, have a little bit more faith. If you feel like you really want to do something after that fantastic serum, I would just add a light lotion just to put the icing on the cake. Another good choice would be the Vino Perfect Brightening Moisturizer from Caudalie. It has a lot of good ingredients. It has the squalene that we love so much that adds and helps to strengthen our skin barrier and keep water naturally trapped in. It has vitamin C, another good antioxidant. And so instead of adding on an oil, use something like that, which also incidentally has niacinamide, a wonderful anti-inflammatory ingredient, which can settle down any irritation from all the extra stuff we've done. So I think that would be a great choice instead of the oil. Someone told me once that when you are wearing makeup and you're taking it off at the end of the night, you should use an oil-based cleanser and then your normal cleanser. So I'm just wondering if double cleansing when you're wearing makeup is the right thing to do or if just one cleansing is enough. And then in the morning, I feel like some people don't cleanse. Like they just use like a spray or something like a cotton swab and just kind of then put their makeup right on and I'm just wondering do, is it necessary to cleanse in the morning or do, are you stripping those oils away that you would want? So I think if somebody is kind of concerned about having oily skin because remember that some people love having oily skin. Oil brings radiance, oil brings glow, but for those of us who are bothered by it I actually think cleansing in the morning and evening can be beneficial but you have to use the right cleanser. You don't have to use many cleansers, just use cleansers with active ingredients that can cut through the oils and reduce excess. So in the morning, you can use something like you're already using with a salicylic acid, and at night, you can just use a gentle, non-soap, foaming cleanser that'll just kind of get off the day's grit and grime so that your pores don't get clogged. But thanks. Kylie, thanks so much for sending in your skincare routine. I think with those few little tweaks, you'll see some big changes. Let me know how it goes. Thank you all for watching this episode of Dear Derm. For more episodes, subscribe to Well and Good Today.